moved down to Nassawatta from Marion, Maryland, and started a lumber business. And he and his family and the Walker family built this facility here in Nassawatta. And uh, years later, as a, as a young kid, growing up, I enjoyed visiting the mill. And the, what I'll do is just attempt to give you a, a morning at the mill as I remember it. Um, waking up in the morning, it was a bright, sunny, warm July, and it was a place for people to sit and watch the logs, logs being sold. And like I said, it was early, and Mr. George, uh, George Johnson was, was firing up the boiler, building up a good head of steam. And uh, his brother, uh, Linwood Johnson, was going over the list that was fastened up on a board right there by the controls for the carriage on what uh, size boards and so forth that had to be sawed that day to be ordered. And uh, the log, there was, there was still plenty of logs there to saw, the truck waiting to unload. And people started showing up, and the mill started to sort of come to life. And uh, it went pretty, pretty soon, there was, I don't know, maybe 16, 17, 18 people. There was machinery everywhere you see a wheel. There was a, there was a belt attached to that, some type of machinery. And uh, it was approaching 8 o'clock, so I got around right over there where the handle is to whistle. And uh, sure enough, Mr. Johnson comes along and lifts me up, and I pull that whistle down, and you could hear that thing for miles around. <laughs> and it was time to go to work. And, uh, the steam engine started moving, and uh, they, uh, there was a, all the belts were fastened, uh, engaged, except the, the uh, belt that drove that big saw. They took that off the wheel every night and put it back on in the morning. And putting that on was, once those wheels started turning, one man would walk up and take that belt throw it and the wheel would catch it and they would just it would be on there. And uh, it, was, it was not a, <laughs> it was something you had to be careful because you could get caught up in the in the wheel, but it was it was done very well every morning and they they started sewing lumber. Uh, as the, the first slice coming off a log that they called a slab, which had bark on it, and that would be rolled down to the to a saw and the, the, the slabs would be chopped up into pieces about that long and tossed in a chute that went up outside and there was a big pile of, <laughs> of wood for it. And people burned wood at that time. Um, every morning we built a fire in the cook stove to cook breakfast. So, I mean, it's, it's everybody, not everybody, but most everybody had a wood, a wood pile. And, um, so the slab wood got good use. I mean, it was that, that, um, and the sawdust from the saw was what fired the boiler. The, the sawdust from the main, from that main saw that sawed the logs. And then the planers and edgers and all, there was a vacuum system in here that collected all the shavings and blew them into the, where the furnace room is. So the, uh, the mill produced its own fuel to run that, to run the furnace and the boiler. Uh, then, the, as the, as the uh, lumber was was sawed, uh, it was rolled down the, the rollers there, and it was rolled the big pieces of lumber, the the two by twelves, two by tens, uh, were plane with this planer right here. There was another planer next to it that did the one-inch boards. 
that uh, and a lot of times they were had to be edged. They weren't squared up like the bigger lumber. And then they were either dressed with the with the small planer or they went to an edger which cut the, the bark off and made you decided what size board you wanted, whether you wanted a one by six or a one by three or whatever. Uh, there was also the uh, the mill manufactured material to make barrels. The barrels were made in a factory next door, and the uh, the layers or the, the sides of the barrel staves were uh, <coughs> were cut in lengths like 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 the length of a barrel. And the saw that cut those, if, if you can imagine, a steel drum with teeth on the outside edges. And there was a little carriage that put the, they would put these uh, lengths of, of uh, log on. And the little carriage would roll and they, it, was, it was whirling. And it would cut the staves in a rounded uh, shape. But like if you look at a barrel, that's... It's, the, the staves are not slapped, they're not flat, but they're like this. And they were cut on that circular saw and then went to another machine which uh, shaved the edges of the staves. And then there was another machine that trimmed the ends and cut a little groove for the barrel head to fit in. And then all this was taken out on the yard to dry and season. Later, it was carried into the barrel house, and uh, the barrels were there was different stalls, uh, maybe I don't know, 12, 14 stalls, and the barrels were assembled um, by workers. And then after they were assembled, they went in a uh, they called it a barrel machine. But it, sta it stapled the, uh, the, the bands around the barrel. And uh, at that time, produce, the barrel, produce was not shipped out of here in barrels at that time. And the biggest customer for the, for the barrels were the water, because the uh, crabs were still shipped out of here and handled in barrels. Uh, the, uh, it's about time for the log truck to deliver logs, and Mr. Uh, uh, Albert was driving the truck, and he would drive this, it was a six-wheel tractor with uh, a single-axle trailer, and they, they, there was a ramp that truck would go up on, and uh, Albert Satcher would get out of the truck, undo the chains from around the logs, walk down right beside the truck, and take what they call a can hook, which is an instrument used to roll the logs, and reach up, fasten it in the log, and pull it down right on it, and then jump under the trailer <laughs> as the logs came off. And you could feel the grind tremble as these big logs hit. And uh, the, uh, there was a gentleman that worked as the log roller. And his name was uh, Mr. Herman Keller. And he, was, he could not, he was deaf, and because of his deafness, he couldn't speak. But, and he worked as, as rolling logs, and then he also, he was a real kind gentleman, and he would teach the kids in town how to make kites, and he would always make kites for us. So I, I learned, really important lesson, I learned how to make a kite. <laughs> and they, they worked, and he was, uh, but that, those memories uh, are something that I'll carry with me all my life. And the, the, the people that worked here, they, they were just good, decent, kind people. And 
Mr. Johnson was, was so nice letting me blow that whistle almost every time I could get that. But it had to be blown exactly at the minute, on the minute. Um, and let's see. The foreman of the mill was Mr. John Kelly. And the foreman of the yard was uh, Bill Davis. And there were trucks going out in the yard, loading up lumber and taking them out for orders. Uh, there was an office right all, almost at the end of the steam engine. There was an office where the foreman of the mill had his office. And, um, That's his initials over there in the, in yeah, the concrete yeah. over there. And uh, his name was Robert Parrish. Yeah, you said he's very heavy. He was millwright and was here to help build and supervise the building of the mill. Um, what is the, uh, the ends of the barrel, the, the, or the barrel heads, were uh, they were, there were blocks cut off, the same saw to get the, the wood, wood pile, cut these blocks of wood right like that, and they, they were tossed over in, well, the, where that swinging saw is, it was like, a, uh, there was there's one saw that cut the boards, I mean, the, 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 uh, the slabs in sections, but then, they also, uh, that saw, that same saw, cut the staves, the lengths of the staves, and then it cut the blocks of wood for the bottom. And that wood was in, it went in something like a cradle with a clamp that went down on it. It, it, it swung against the saw, and it sliced off the ends of the boards. And then they were stapled together. And there was another machine that because you ended up with, with a square, perfectly square bottom. They put these squares in this little machine and it it cut a perfectly round circle, which made the bottom of the barrel. Um, and that was the machine there that they bundled them up. That's right. They, they, the bundles, once the barrel heads were cut, they would put that machine and clamp down so they would stay they wouldn't warp or get out of shape. Uh, we, everybody, been trying to guess what it was. Bart walked right in there and he'd tell them right away what that was. Yeah. And Bart, you were telling us about his pipe off to the uh, boiler myself that underground went to the barrel thing. Yeah, like uh, a, yeah. A this steam, steam engine also, this like this boiler, also furnished. There was a small engine in the barrel factory that ran the barrel machine that stapled the bands on the barrel. And there was a steam engine over there that, well, it did two things. It, um, it, ran, the, it ran the barrel machine, and there was belts like, like in here, except smaller, that, that ran that machine. And there's an underground steam line going over there to run that machine. And also, there was a big concrete vat that they, the uh, boiler would send hot water and that that would be that would be filled with hot water to soak the bands in, so they would could form the the, the, uh, the barrel without they, they splintering and splitting and so forth. How big was your yard in that time? How much area did it take up? The the yard took up well what you see here, but it went all the way back a lot further back. One of them houses, right? Yeah, yeah. It included all those houses. There was lumber stacked all around everywhere. <coughs> and the barrel warehouse well, almost went to 600. Is that correct? Uh, well, one lot from 600. One lot. From, okay. Where the end of the fence is, where the old firehouse is, where for the end of this property. That's right. Okay. So, how many people work here? I was, this morning I was trying to figure out, I would say maybe about 16 were in the mill. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and if the, <coughs> if, the uh, if the barrel factory was running, mm -hmm. maybe they weren't quite so many machines here running that would uh -huh. Uh -huh. transfer. They, that didn't run all the time. This ran every day. 
What year did he close down? I'm not sure. I'm guessing the late 50s. Did all the lumber come from North Hamilton County? So far as I know. Now, the, 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 uh, the straps for the barrels, of course, did not. <coughs> and, uh, but any, anything else <coughs> was here. And I do remember, I was with my father, and he pointed out, he said, I want, if there's something coming, I want you to remember. It's going to be very important because you're never going to see anything like it again. And coming in this road, of course, it was the road, instead of paving, <coughs> was dirt then. And this was in the, in the 40s. And it was a log cart. And the, it's a type of log cart that had the big, high wheels. And it had a team of oxen, ac, uh, oxen pulling it. And, and slung under the cart was one log. And, that's, and it filled up the entire car. And the other end was dragging along. And, there, and he said that's a, the last of the old growth timber that anybody knows anything about. <coughs> and they were bringing it in here to, to mill it. Plus trucks were replacing the oxen also. Yeah, well, it was that, they couldn't have gotten that yeah. on a truck. Well. The majority of the lumber that they processed here, it went where? I mean, to build, build houses, build houses, right build houses, churches, businesses. Mm -hmm. Majority of it was used right, right, right here. Yeah, yeah, and it was. I mean, they and, were. And, and with Northampton Lumber Company and business at the time, actually it was. So yeah. they they sold lumber yeah. and everything. It, the Northampton Lumber Company at that time was probably the largest private employer, other than the railroad, south of Salisbury. That's what, 1887? They, did, they had a farming operation, a big farming <coughs> operation, and they had the lumber business and the uh, hardware business. I know I heard Jeff Walker say one day when this thing was operating, said you could stand there, there and you could feel the whole ground, the earth just shaking pretty well. So, quite an operation. He said originally the old mill was on the other side. It burned. I don't remember that one. That's what carried the sawdust and everything to the back over there to feed the boiler? Yeah, yeah, there was a vacuum. Okay. On every yeah, machine, right. there was a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And all the sawdust, the chips, the shavings, all that. Um, and it was interesting, the shavings on the barrel stays was only about that wide and about for this long. So it looked entirely different than the little chips that came out of the planer. <laughs> Yeah, where that was the Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All that stuff right back on that wall, you can see. Yeah, back, yeah, back, back that, that brick wall. And yeah, the that's where it, it shot against that wall. And then the men shoveled it into yeah. the... And then, of course, the sawdust from the, 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 the big saw went down in the pit and blew out. They had a, a, a metal chute, so it blew out across the floor. Okay. And uh, during the day, they were really busy. It, that sawdust in that whole pit was like that deep. I mean, the only place you could see the concrete was right in front of the boiler where they were shoveling mm -hmm. the uh, sawdust in the boiler. You mentioned about that belt being taken off of that saw or whatever every night. What was the purpose of that? Why did he take the belt off? I didn't ask. <laughs> 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 I was but uh, I, I, don't, I really don't know. Every, every other belt was on. But that one was taken off, and they, they, they took it off by, uh, they had a piece of pipe. And they, they would stand back like a baseball bat and throw and hold, and swing that pipe, and it would go up under the belt. And then a couple men would pull on it, and it would slide off. But in the mornings when they put it on the wheel, they, uh, one man would take it and get right up close and Heave it on, and it, it would catch on that wheel, and then it straight tight. <laughs> but now that boiler ran all night long. I mean, it kept the water yeah, hot and everything. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. Do just they just the, the boiler never went out. Right. And, and these machines had like a free wheel. You see the two double wheels up there. Mm -hmm. well, one of those is uh, no power. In other words, well, it's no. They both they both look. The power the power is in that in that belt. But this, this uh, wheel here is a free wheel. And what they would do if, if they wanted to stop this machine, that 
no switch to cut it off and on. They, they had a long stick and they would push the belt over to the drive wheel. And once the belt would catch, it would go on the, the drive wheels. And then to pull it off, they would just take the stick and just give the least little bit of pressure and the belt would just slowly come over to the free wheel. And then once it got away from the power, it, it stopped current. I sure wouldn't like it. Osha <laughs> sure wouldn't like that. Yeah, it is a little bit before them. Yeah, thank God. Yeah. Corey, do you remember any other than one fatality on the wheel on the mill? What's that? Do you remember any other than one fatality? And then one guy committed suicide. The, said, the only one I remember was in, I didn't see it, but they, uh, um, I was real good friends with Mr. Johnson. He, we, we'd sit and talk for the longest amount of time, and he would uh, he would tell us tell the tale about the, the, the when he, this man came in was mentally disturbed, and the first thing he tried to do was jump into the wheel. Good, and they pulled him out of that, and he broke away, and then ran around to where the saw was running, and he jumped into that. Did you bury him? No, I was. I, <laughs> that happened before I got involved in that, in that line of work. But I, you all were mentioning the blacksmith shop. That was another thing that I loved to do, especially in the winter time. I was to Ivy Upshur had a blacksmith shop, and that was a working blacksmith shop also. And I used to enjoy sitting in there on a chilly winter day, and. Uh, he would have the forge going, it was nice and warm, and he would, it'd be interesting to see. He was always making something or some kind of fitting for a trailer or a, a wagon. Or, that was in Nassauwagas? Yeah, it was right, uh, right there, on the next day. street. On the next street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, you told us about, the gentleman told us about with the sight glasses on the steam, where if it got to oh, a yeah. point uh, the whole... Mr. Johnson, there was a, <laughs> there was a, a gate, a metal gate, it was a, steam regulated, but there was a metal, like a glass tube, about that long. And it was, you, it was pretty well halfway. And uh, Mr. Johnson said that, always keep an eye on that glass. And he said, if you see the glass filling up or the glass going down, don't look back. You just get out of here and run as hard as you can run. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but don't have to raise you up. It's loaded Russell. Like, what, time, what time did they start? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Right. And then they had lunch at 12. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Okay. And, the, I mean, field people in the fields, people in the homes, everybody could pretty well set their clock by the mill whistle. Yeah, to see the time and set the set to people in the homes and stuff like that. But it was and another thing Northampton Lumber Company did, they had. Um, uh, a municipal water system because the, uh, the, they had two, two tremendous big windmills and then if the wind wasn't blowing the, this uh, engine, they pump water all day long. So there's years ago, they did, in fact our house and, and a lot of houses in time were on the, the, the Northampton Lumber Company water system. They had a water system before a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. And the steam, the steam engine was used to pump water also for itself and for others. Yes. Mm -hmm. That water system only served on this side of the track. No, it went over on the other it side. It did? Uh-huh. I, I saw that line dug, they dug that line up when they widened the highway. I saw, I saw a section of that dug up myself. And the the, uh, the funeral home was on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they put all the way up to your uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all about the beans that are underneath your funeral and the size of them. Well, they they are two like two by uh, I guess eighteen. They were milled here. How long were they? 
uh, probably ATV. But you said your exterminator, when he comes today, he said yeah. they look just like, yeah. like brand new cells. That's right. <laughs> Huh. Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got it? Yeah. I want to know how everybody got the like that in and like the big steam engines. How they got it in here? Who put yeah. them in here? Uh, well, they didn't have any trouble moving things if you have the equipment to do it with, and it's. Oh. Uh, did you all do it? I mean, a company did come here and set it up. Well, it was the mill was built around 1900. So, I, but uh, I'm not sure the, the, the you know construction crew. But they were. I mean, they moved houses then uh, with mules. Yeah. They jack the houses up, put them on rollers, and they put it on a spindle, and you would walk around the spindle, and the house moved. That's how they moved houses. Oh, so there was. Uh, church at Painter Sanctuary used to be next door to Winter Collins House. They pulled that cross steel on the trees and set it. Move it. First part of Lewis Brothers, they had that cart you're talking about, that would carry loads. How many other mills were around here when this one was operating? <coughs> there were a lot of small mills. There were a lot of, of, them, a lot of small mills, yeah. and at the time, at the time, at that time, diesel was coming into play. They were taking the mills to the woods rather than bringing the logs to the mill. Did they do any shingle work? Hmm? Did they do any shingles? They, in, out on the yard, they, they, they didn't make shingles here, but out on the yard was rows and rows and rows of wood shingles. I mean, they, that was, that's... Uh, bought them and resold them. They bought them and resold them. It was, it was, uh, it was mostly mine. They were red, redwood. I was saying, the lumber you cut here was mostly pine? It was mostly pine. It was some oak cut. And uh, there was some uh, uh, gum. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know what really that was used for. Pallets. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, there was, I didn't see any of it milled, but at one time they milled, there was birch here, and they milled that. And, the, uh, in my, my grandmother's house, the uh, sills there are oak and birch in that house. Hey, gentlemen, who made your kites? What did you make that material out of for your kites? They uh, weren't gone. It was, <laughs> no, it was. <laughs> they, somewhere in the manufacture of the barrel, and I'm not sure how, what they used it for, but there was, it was like the bait. The, Size and thickness of a uh, plaster lab, and you can split that in two. And uh, cross it, and then you had to get a big sheet of paper and string, and that's how you made the kite. And they had an arch in the barrel, and that would make the arch. The arch. I'm not sure what what that. I, I mean, the, the, the straps were. Uh, <laughs> Was some other type of material that was brought in, you know, they had to buy that from somewhere. They tied them together, string called the back, make it both. Maybe at the end of the day, but sharpening the saw. Well, I said, yeah, and then uh, we went through, of course, the, the mill waking up, and then when the mill was put to sleep, the last, as the whistle would blow, and the, the steam engine would stop, and people would start drifting away, going to work. And the, the last thing you would hear as you left the mill was, was the old gentleman that sharpened the big saw. And you, you can, you're going to have to tell him how that sound. <laughs> it's not another sound like a file going across the large 
saw. They're a real high tension steel, and that file going across that tooth, it's a ringing sound. It's, uh, oh, I just don't know nothing to tell you to compare it to. It sounds good. It, it's got a, got well, Mr. Drondy's going to, he's going to hook that saw up, <laughs> and he's going to sharpen it for us. Yeah. And we, we're going to hear that sound one more time. You get there. <coughs> So this was done by hand? Oh yeah. Do it with a flat file. Flat file. 10 or 12 inch flat file. And, and that there. tooth's got to be filed dead square. Yeah. If you get a little angle to that tooth, if that side long, it's going to go that way. Or that way. It's got to be dead square. And your saw is set with a little bit of lead. They call it, just like you line in your car, you put a little toe. Mm -hmm. That saw's got a big toe to it. Wind. Do you know if the logs were washed to get the dirt off or anything, or checked with a magnet to see if there's any nails or bolts or anything? I never saw that done. Of course, then the logs were coming out of a, a you know, a deep woods. They weren't getting logs all along the edge of a field or out of somebody's yard. I mean, they were virgin timber. Yeah. So who owned the majority of the timber? I mean, did you all, did you all own it, or? Well, they they would buy, a lot of times they would buy a, a farm, cut the timber, and sell the corn. Sell corn. Uh, and you've got to remember, it, let's see, the Depression hit, what, 20, 29, 28, 29, and and this, I mean, it, that was awful. Did the mill shut down? The mill didn't shut down, but a lot of farms were sold. Uh, you didn't, and it was so cheap, the lumber was so, everything was cheap. I mean, but this, but this kept going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, after, after uh, I took a lunch break and I, I had, I found three soda bottles, knee-high soda bottles, and I hid them in the grass and uh, took those three empty bottles down to Mr. Muck Rogers' store and got a, got a uh, raw RC cola and got some change back. So, I mean, that's... Could you give you two cents for it? That's right. That's right. I used to do the same thing. If it was a Bradford, Nim Bradford headlock, he'd take that film and go all the way around that top of that bottle, make sure it didn't have a crack or a little chip in it or anything. He didn't want to be stuck with a soda pop bottle. That's for sure. But like I said, my gosh, somebody, you could reach in them old big containers and get cookies that big, you know, like two or three for a penny. Mm -hmm. Just in my day, you know. <laughs> but it, was, it was a, you know, it was really a neat and, and wonderful time. I spent many a half an hour in this field just soaking up and watching the machinery run and the, and, uh, the people that, that ran it. And it was, there's a lot going on, and it uh, they cut and planed and manufactured a lot of lumber. You heard a lot of stories about, uh, and uh, nobody claims it, nobody knows who done it, but it would say like some of them like Halloween or something would come here, and a head of steam still on the border, it might not be a clean up, but you know it may have. 50, 75 pounds of steam or something. Some of them come here, they were down on that whistle, tire down, and run and leave it. <laughs> Wake everybody up. Uh -oh. uh, and, then, and then poor Mr. Johnson would have to come down <laughs> and fire the boiler again. <laughs> what time did he normally come of a morning? He was ahead of the he was, he was always here when I got you. <laughs> What, what was the pay back then? About 20 cents an hour. 20. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and that was your pay or, or that was some of the other workers? Or did they get paid different? Or everybody had a set? I, I mean, I... <laughs> did, did you remember? I, I don't remember. Well, I, I, it wouldn't have been discussed. Okay. I got you. What was the working pressure on that boiler? I don't, I don't know. 
I mean, it was enough to drive, I mean, you look at every wheel here and imagine a belt on it, turning something. Well, that's more to do with the volume uh, as opposed to the pressure. Yeah, I, but I, I don't know. It was, it was, it's a big boiler and it, it certainly had enough power to run, run everything here. Plus the barrel. Plus the barrel. Yeah. Now, being close to the railroad, was anything shipped out by rail? I mean, did they make railroad ties or anything here? They, they, there were there were railroad ties cut at some mills. Uh, I'm not aware of any being cut here. Okay. Okay. But did they ship some lumber by rail away from here? I, if if it happened, I don't know about it. Okay. Is your idea that it's what was, yeah, what came in here was uh, finished lumber like uh, redwood siding. Redwood uh, shingles for roofs, that that type of thing. But it was a lot. I mean, it was a lot going on in these. East Shore was a busy place, and there were a lot of of barns and houses and businesses. There was a lot of construction going on, and it took a lot of a lot of lumber. Was that six days a week or five five, five days a week? Lumber was shipped in by rail. Where did that come from? It came from the West Coast. Oh, West Coast. Anybody have anything else? Josh, you got anything you want to add to? I know you've been digging for years and all of them. Well, well, I want to, I want to thank you for having me down. And we got a head of steam there if you want to blow the whistle. <laughs> I know some of these. How about that little gentleman right there? And let's let, let's, yeah. let him do yeah. it. Let's, 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 we let's, thank you for coming.